What's going on? It's Mark. And today I want to talk about a concept that is super powerful that's really helped me. And I want to share it with you in case, you know, especially for me at the time when I was first getting started, I had this question and it was about how can I actually change my identity? I hear people talking about it all the time. I actually heard Owen talking about it. And, you know, definitely an uh, interesting concept of shifting people's identity or having an identity level change. But my question was, how do you actually do it? And so it's not until I started to play around with different things that I started to see what worked for me. I tried some things that didn't work, but I eventually found some things that did work. And so I want to share that with you in case maybe you know someone or maybe you yourself is uh, you're looking for some sort of solution or some way of going about this. So this might spark some ideas. So this is basically the process that I go through personally, and this is applied not just for pickup and dating, but it's also applied when it's come to sales, when it's come to business, making money, losing weight, things like that. And here is the process. So we actually do this anyway. That's the interesting thing is that most times when we got into watching RSD videos or we started watching videos on YouTube of someone that we really look up to, we actually start to take on aspects of their identity, right? Or maybe there's a friend that you really look up to or there's a mentor that you look up to and you start to talk like them. You start to use the same language. You start to use the same inflections and you actually see this happen a lot of times even with YouTubers and they're influenced by certain people and they start talking like them. And so we actually use that anyway. But the issue that I've seen that I ran into was that I started to become someone other than myself. And who I became was someone that was actually more like Todd because I was spending a lot of time around Todd and his content and I, I was basically emulating a lot of the things that he was doing because I really looked up to him back when I was in Vegas and I was coaching and I was like, wow, this guy's a master when it comes to coming up with things to say. And I started to say those sorts of things and I actually kind of just became almost like a carbon copy of him. I've seen guys do this when it comes to other instructors too, maybe like Julian or Owen, and they watch a lot of their infields and they start saying things like they do. And what I actually found is that eventually what happens is you almost lose touch with your sense of identity. You start to take on the identity of someone else, which is fine. You can borrow confidence in doing that. But what I actually found is more effective is taking on the identity of the future version of yourself. So that is the first step in this process is getting deep on who is it that you actually want to become who are you now and who is it that you actually want to become and the way i personally do that is with something that i call a digital detox where i basically stay off technology for at least 48 72 hours ideally i've gotten the best results for myself when i've done it for 10 days i know that not everyone has the ability to do that but if you do then that's great i basically what i did was i found an airbnb rented it out for 10 days and just stayed there. Uh, I had a notebook and a pen and kind of lived in isolation and just would write out my thoughts and feelings. And I had a lot of feelings of self-loathing that would come up, a lot of negative emotions that would come up that I would have to work through and deal with. But through that process, I also really got clear on who I was, who I wanted to become, what my values are, who, what I stand for, who I want to surround, who I want to surround myself with, what kind of people do I want to be around? Uh, what does my life look like a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? What is my vision for myself? And when you get clear on that, then you have clarity around the future version of yourself. So that's really the first step that I personally take is thinking about who, I, who do I want to become? And you don't have to go in isolation to do this. You know, Even if you just took an hour of your day without technology and just sat down and had a pen and a paper and wrote it out. And then after that, you transcribed it, maybe into Google Docs or something. Um, I can actually show you an example. So uh, I actually came up with this, our company gave us a, 
like a format for this called the morning formula. And this is basically what mine looks like. I pulled it up here on my computer. Uh, it basically talks about who I am and I have some pictures to remind me of things that I want to do, some rules for myself, um, energy equals freedom. I choose foods that are nutritious and energize me. There's a set of rules here uh, for myself. And then some values that I stand for, growth, patience, self-reliance, freedom, happiness, etc. And then some things to remind myself of, right? So characteristics of myself, some quotes. Um, and then this is essentially the life, a day in the life of my future self, right? So I have clarity around what I want my day to look like, what I want my week to look like, what I want to master. And then this is something called incantations. Um, you can see it's affirmations, but it's a little bit different. So I actually worked with a Tony Robbins results coach. This is like about a year ago. And we went through this exercise together that was really helpful where she basically had me visualize. And actually, let's do this now. And I know we've done this in the past, but even if you've done it in the past, it can help to reinforce this idea. So go ahead and close your eyes and think about something that you have a lot of certainty around. Whether it's a sport that you play, maybe you play soccer or basketball or baseball or some, some sort of sport that you're really good at that you have a lot of competency, competency with. Or maybe it's a skill, right? Maybe you're really good when it comes to writing or speaking or Maybe you're great at some sort of board game. You like to play chess and you're really good at that. You're great at poker. Or even if it's just video games, right? Whatever that thing is, I want you to imagine that you're doing that thing. And one other thing is I want you to also stand up while you're doing this exercise. Unless you're driving or something, just you know, be safe. You don't have to close your eyes while you're driving, of course. But I'm assuming that you're watching this and you're at home or you're in a place where you can stand up, go through this exercise. So go ahead, imagine yourself standing up, eyes closed in that situation where you're doing that thing that you're really confident in. And I want you to notice, how is your physiology? Is your chin up or is it down? How is your breathing? Is your breathing heavy? Is it slow? Is it fast? How are you standing? Are you standing straight and upright? Are you standing slouched? How do you feel in your body? Is your chest up and out or is it back and slouch? Where is your shoulders? Take note of your physiological state in this moment, right? So also, I want you to take note of what is it that you're focused on? What are the things that you're thinking about in this moment? What are the things that you're saying to yourself? What is your self-talk? What are you saying to others? Are you with a team? Are you by yourself? Are you talking to yourself? Are you pumping yourself up? Are you getting excited? What sorts of things are you saying to yourself in this moment? All right, so go ahead and open your eyes. We can end the exercise. And actually, just take a moment. You can pause this video and write down those observations. How did you feel in your body? What did you notice about your body position, your chest, your shoulders, your chin? Were you walking around? Were you breathing deeply? Were you breathing slowly or fast? What were you saying to yourself? What were you saying to others? Right, so take note of all of those things and write it down. Just do it for a few seconds here. Go ahead and pause the video. And when you're ready, so now I'm assuming that you've unpaused the video, done the exercise. When you're ready, let's talk about this a little bit. So this is basically what I have here, right? This is my example because I was thinking about 
one thing that I'm confident in is my ability to play Ultimate Frisbee. I played Ultimate Frisbee on a club team in college, and I had a lot of confidence when I was on the field. I had the confidence that I was one of the best players. That was my self-talk, that I'm the man. They used to call me the machine. That was my nickname in, in college um, on the Ultimate Frisbee team. So I said, you know, I'm a machine. That's like one of the things I was saying in terms of my language. Um, and so those are the things that I notice about myself and you might have similar thoughts and feelings about yourself. And this is a really important thing to take note of because a lot of times we don't even realize it. We don't really take note of how we feel in that state of flow or complete certainty or confidence. And so if you don't really notice it or if we're not aware of it, how can we actually model it? Right? So it's important to gain that awareness. And through this exercise, hopefully you have more clarity around what that looks like for you. And you can continue to practice this exercise to gain more clarity and to actually practice that state of physiology. I practice it every morning. I go through that exercise every single morning because I'm practicing putting myself in a state of certainty, of flow, of confidence, of effortlessness. So you can also include that in that sort of document, right? I have it down here. In that sort of document, and essentially it's like your character or your avatar and something that I actually used to call my alter ego. And I think there's books written about this. I heard about this recently. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I used to actually go through this exercise, both with my clients and with myself. And I think there's a book called The Alter Ego Effect. And actually some people at our company were talking about this. Some of the salespeople were talking about the importance of identity and creating an alter ego. And I was like, that's amazing. I used to actually do that when it came to dating and pickup. And what you do is you can actually give that person a name. That person who's in a state of certainty, you give that person a name. That's still you, but it's that future version of yourself or it's that version of yourself that's in complete certainty. And when you practice that, you can enter into that state. You can enter into that identity. And so it might take some time to gradually step into it and Identity eventually is a habit. So you continue to take on this identity over and over again. Now it's almost like, okay, now it feels natural. This is, this is my natural state now. So if you continue to practice this every single day, every single morning, I like to practice it in the morning because that's, you know, that is essentially the tipping point for momentum for the rest of your day. The, the way you spend the first five minutes or the first hour of your day determines and sets the course for the rest of your day. So for myself, I protect my mornings and I go through the, these exercises in order to instill that identity so I can assimilate that for myself. And I remind myself essentially of where I'm headed, how I feel in a state of certainty, and that anchors you to that new alter ego or identity. And instead of stepping into a version of someone else, you're stepping into a version of yourself. Because once again, this is the main thing that I saw as an issue with some of this stuff. I, you know, I personally have gotten so much value from RSD. At the same time, I almost felt limited at a certain point when I was just obsessed with it. And I started just copying what other people were doing. I would copy their texts. I would copy the things that they were saying. I would copy the, how they were saying it. And I was like, am I even being myself anymore? Who am I in actuality? And it wasn't until I went through this exercise myself and had some time to gain clarity on who I was. And I wrote it down. I wrote down exactly what I wanted out of my life and who I wanted to become. And it was only then that I was able to make that departure from stepping away from just modeling and copying other people into stepping into myself. So look, I invite you to consider possibly trying this exercise for yourself. It's really up to you, right? I'm just sharing what's worked for me, but it's up to you to really find what works for you. I found that being able to take on 
the alter ego. It's, you know, they have that phrase, fake it till you make it, but I don't really like to say fake it till you make it, but it's practicing, right? You're practicing becoming that person until eventually you are that person. And this goes in line with visualization as well, because I practice a lot of visualization. I go through this exercise in the morning. And I, it goes hand in hand, because as you're going through this exercise, we're going through, and I actually read this document out loud every single day to myself, and I go through the exercise of the incantations. That's essentially practicing to become that future version of yourself. And you can actually give that person a name. Right? You can give your alter ego a name. You see this all the time in sports too. Professional athletes oftentimes give themselves a name. Right? You see it in sports like, for example, Money Mayweather or you know, when Kobe, when he played basketball, he was the Black Mamba. You know, there's so many examples of people that create this alter ego for themselves and it's like you're stepping into that. And it's not something where you have to, you're not being disingenuous. Once again, it's just practicing until it becomes a habit and your habit becomes your identity. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Hope this helps. If you have any questions about this, feel free to send me an email at markchino360 at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll talk soon.